Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Uh, got a short uh, show for you today, um, introducing Kevin Wells. But just in a second, um, this is um, this podcast is for all the men in this area. We have a podcast, uh, a men's conference coming up February third, and uh, here's just a short promo. Mission Blueprint presents the Men's Conference coming February 3rd in Brookings, South Dakota, featuring Kevin Wells, an award-winning sports reporter and featured speaker for That Man Is You. Also keynoting Father Jeff Norfolk, priest in the Diocese of Sioux Falls, current formation director at St. John Vianney Seminary. And new to the Men's Conference, the Arm Wrestling Competition. Claim the right to be champ. Individual tickets or tables may be purchased at mission-blueprint.org. That's mission-blueprint.org. All right, so we're calling all men uh, to this men's conference called Becoming a Disciple. And we have two speakers, Father Jeff Norfolk. He was going to be here today, but he's in India. <laughs> so kind of hard to get a hold of him. But uh, we have Kevin Wells. Uh, before I bring Kevin on, I just want to throw this quote up. You've all heard this before. And I think this reflects what's really what hasn't been happening in our culture. And Edinburgh Burke says, and I quote, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. And I think that's exactly what's been happening. So uh, we bring in Kevin Wells. How are you doing, Kevin? Hey, Glenn, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Hey, so good to have you. Share a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a, uh, I'm a 56 year old man, just turned 56, uh, living in outside of Annapolis, Maryland. Um, I have a wife, Krista, three children. Um, Really, I'm a very fortunate man. I've, I've gotten to do some things in life that I wanted to do. I became a, uh, I was always an athlete. I played baseball and other sports, and I always wanted to combine writing with my love of sports, especially my love of baseball. And somehow, God only knows how, I ended up sort of attaining my goal or even a dream, and I became a Major League Baseball writer. Um, I covered the Tampa Bay Rays way down there in sunny Florida. Um, and... Um, did that for a while. I was a, I was a professional journalist, I guess, for 10 years. And then um, I got I got married and being a being a traveling sports writer is not a, a very good way to sustain your marriage. And, and uh, so I, I ended up going back home to my to Maryland, where I joined the family business for 18 years and sort of um, uh, raised my family as a masonry contractor. But the family business has been around for 65 years. And and that was a good way to sort of um, do the grunt work, the dirty work of, of sort of make, making gymnasiums and buildings higher and longer and wider. And that was a good way. And, but but um, the Lord, in a, in a mysterious way, <clears throat> has led me back to journalism, but but not really. Um, I'm no longer covering baseball and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but I'm in a, in a certain way, I think um, God has led me to what all be boldly enough to say a prophetic journalism. Mm. Uh, where I do feel that the books that I have written over the past um, 10 years, and I have another book that will be released in the fall by Ignatius Press, um, it, it calls, I, you know, Glenn, I, I, I often sort of think about it like, um, you know, Mary, you know, what, what do you call me to do? We, we all know Mother Teresa's famous uh, quote about being a little pencil in God's right. hand. So I have a little nub of a pencil. What do you call me to do? And so I've taken to really um, mystical union, contemplative prayer, meditative prayer, a lot of silent prayer to try and, um, you know, really lend my ear to Mary's heart. Mary, what do you want? And, and um, so, so I've been writing books and, and a lot of articles actually through crisis and other periodicals um, that address the the very strange times that we're in, the winter time of the Catholic Church, the winter time society, always try and pro propose sort of bright hallelujahs of solution, of answers, of hope. Um, but, but you know, it is time for candor in American Catholicism. You can't be a, a prophetic journalist if you're not candid. So I've been doing a lot of that. What a time in the church we're in. And I think that is one of the gifts that we Christians really need to use is the prophetic, um, the gift of prophecy. What is what is happening um, in the world, and and how do we combat? You know, how do we become like Judas Maccabeus? You know, he's one of my favorite Old uh, Testament characters. So, give us a nugget. Um, what are you going to talk about at the conference on February third? 
Well, um, I'm not going to talk about baseball. Um, I think I think what I'll talk about, Glenn. Um, you know, I'm always I'm one of these guys that sort of waits to um, the last few weeks to really gather my thoughts because I I don't with things changing so rapidly in in, in not only our church but the world. Um, oftentimes, it's like I'm an old deadline writer. You know, you write about the latest thing happening, but but I think the crux of it will be this. <clears throat> If we as Christian men today feel any part of us still tethered to the sidelines out of whether it's comfort or a flat footedness or a reluctance to really dive in to show the face of Christ to the world, then, then shame on us. I mean, I, I don't know any other way to say it. It's we're under societal collapse. I mean, you know, let's be honest, Glenn, you know this. It, well, I'm not going to speak for you, Glenn, but I'll speak for myself. There, there does seem to be a red tide of like pus that's just sweeping over the world as far as gender, sexuality, comfort, greed, hidden secrets. You know, I, I'm tired of the Jeffrey Epstein stories. I'm tired of the strange things coming from the pen of the director of the DDF, Cardinal Fernandez. I'm, I'm just tired of the, of the, of the strangeness, this, and it, to me, it just seems to press down and press down and press down. And, and, and as Catholic men who understand the burden of, of our identity to be protectors of our families, of our wife, of, of, of our consciences, of our souls, of, of sort of that inclination, maybe of concupiscence to do things that we shouldn't be doing. Well, if we're if we're men of prayer, if we're men who 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 really commit ourselves to um, the sacrament of reconciliation, we we hit the holy hour, uh, we pray the rosary, uh, we we attend you know weekday masses as many as we can during the week uh, when it's not twenty nine below in South Dakota and we can get outdoors. So I I, I can I'm in Maryland. It's only it's 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 twenty one degrees here. It's like ball. oh that's shorts weather. <laughs> yeah, that's shorts weather for us. It is. So I guess what I'll propose in, in, in the two presentations I'll give is, is different thoughts and ideas. Um, one, to a story I'll tell about one of the most heroic American soon-to-be saints in the history of our country named Venerable Aloysius Schwartz. And, I'll, and I'll, I guess I'll try and display for the men what a hero actually does and how he never loses, never loses. Amen. So this is Venerable Elvis Schwartz, and, and then the, in a second, um, in my second talk, I think I'll just get a little bit into um, the things I've learned in my own life through mistakes, through humiliations, through things I've done incorrectly, uh, where God has sort of come in and said, "Hey, Kevin, you know, I'm going to pull you in a different direction now. You know, we 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 need, as I, I'll go back to it again, Glenn, what we need sort of a prophetic voice out there now because." It's gone dark in my churches. <laughs> it's gone yeah. dark among the lady. Same here. Very dark. And we are in very dark times. Um, you know, I'll conclude by saying, uh, maybe repeating what Pope Benedict said, the church is going to get smaller. And we're seeing that happen right now. Uh, so anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Wells. Kevin, we look forward to seeing you February 3rd. All men, calling all men to becoming a disciple of Christ. Stop sitting on the sofa and get up. Uh, and by the way, Dallas Law, so it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks, Kevin. I appreciate your time. God bless you. See you soon. See you soon, Glenn. All right. Thank you. That was Kevin Wells, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so calling on my brothers, uh, all men, to the men's conference, February 3rd in Brookings, South Dakota, at Old Sanctuary. So what does the day look like? Uh, we start at 9 in the morning. I'm still trying to find a priest. Um, to say that 8 a.m. Mass for us. I'm not sure. I don't have one yet, but I'm still working on it. But come to Old Sanctuary at 9 a.m. in the morning. We have a couple keynotes in the morning with Father Jeff. Uh, lunch is, uh, if you register, lunch is included. And then uh, Kevin will be in the afternoon with two keynotes. And then we have some fellowship time, uh, beer and Blarney at 5. That could be even earlier. Depends how the day goes. We have some cigars for you cigar smokers to purchase. T-shirts to buy. Um, so we do have some merchandise. And uh, we have a testimony. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy this gentleman I just met. Um, Mr. Remick, he'll be uh, closing the conference with um, uh, how God spoke to him as an atheist. 
pretty crazy. So calling all men, I uh, hope to men. I, 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 some of you are listening to this thinking, nah, I don't want to go. No, you need to come. You need to be there. We need you. The church needs you to rise up. So come uh, February 3rd to Brookings South Dakota for the Men's Conference. Go to mission-blueprint.org. That's mission-blueprint.org to sign up and register. Hope to see all of you there. God bless you.